So Radhi, what do you think about intimacies? Yes, it's hard to put intimacies into one single word because frankly, it's an experience that sort of blew me away. Before viewers, you wonder what we are on about. Intimacies is the book we are reviewing this fortnight. It's by Katie Kitamura and the book was discovered by Radhi and she asked that we review it. It is a book that has actually won a lot of accolades. Yes, it has. It was long listed for the 2021 US National Book Award and the 2022 Penn Faulkner. That's pretty impressive. And it was on Barack Obama's 2021 summer reading list. Mm -hmm. It was released in September 2021 and it comes almost four years after her last book, A Separation, which was highly celebrated too. Yes, and I would certainly want to read that book. Me too. And it is not the movement that I'm talking of. Before we can carry on with the review, let me just tell you a little bit about Book Nook once again. I know you've heard it before, but listen to it again. It's uh, your online destination for book reviews, book recommendations, and everything to do with reading and writing. At Book Nook, we review contemporary literature, classics, bestsellers, and non-fiction books, though we haven't done one so far. Our reviews are totally unbiased, and we try to provide incisive insights into the books and authors we are reviewing. about an unnamed female protagonist who has just moved to The Hague on an assignment in a court which is based on, though never named as such, on the International Criminal Court. She is an interpreter whose job is to interpret testimony from one language to another. The book highlights the difference between a translator and an interpreter, where the former translates the words verbatim and the latter must do that along with understanding the nuances of what's being conveyed. This too is an intimacy of sorts. All right. The narrator clearly struggles to settle into her new life in The Hague, you know. She has just one friend, Jana, who's of Serbian-Ethiopian descent. And she is in a pretty ambiguous sort of relationship with Adrian, a married man who may or may not be in the process of, you know, separating from his wife. Jana works as a curator in the National Gallery, a job that she describes as being that of a housekeeper. Yana lives in an edgier part of town and really is not, definitely not the sort of person you would expect the interpreter, let's call her that, to be, you know, friends with. Yes. Uh, Adrian, we are never told what he does, is more the interpreter's type, suave and well-off. Funnily enough, Katie Kitamura names some characters and leaves the others anonymous, without names. I like the fact that she breaks the rules in that way. Yeah, Radhi. And that reminds me of the song from America. Oh. Horse with no name, and here we have a lady with no name. I was just waiting for your music and I <laughs> A little more on Adria. He has separated from his wife, who has moved to Lisbon along with their children. We are introduced to Adrian's wife first through her photographs and then via a fleeting appearance in the book. Yet she's a character who simply can't be ignored. Oh, absolutely. And you know, she's a powerful presence. And then there's a defense lawyer called Keys. He is introduced in the beginning while he is making a sort of crude pass at the interpreter and then realizing that she is with Adrian, he tries to poison her mind against him by talking about his wife with whom he is a good friend. Little does Keys know that the interpreter is aware of Adrian's uh, marital status. Keys does make a reappearance later in the book as the lawyer for one of the most powerful characters in the book. Yes, another really really powerful character and anonymous character is somebody who's just referred to as the former president. He's the leader of an unnamed African country, is being tried for war crimes after having led an insurrection after having lost an election. This seems like an analogy with what happened in the USA after Donald Trump lost his election. Yeah. The character of the former president is very imposing. A war criminal sitting in a hostile, imposing environment of the court manages to exude such a sense of power and even menace that every time he appears, he just takes over the page. Oh, completely. I think there's another Trumpian analogy out here when the judge asked the former president to control his unruly supporter sitting in the gallery. Quite in the manner of, you know, Donald Trump being called to control his supporters after the riots on Capitol Hill. Intimacies is a novel that does not rely on a large cast of characters. Besides those already discussed, there's Anton, an owner of a bookshop who gets mugged in the vicinity of Yana's apartment and his sister Eileen. 
Yana introduce the inter introduces the interpreter to Emmy, and the interpreter seems to be drawn into the incident of his mugging and injury. Yes. All said and done, intimacy reveals Katie Mura to be, you know, Katie Kitamura to be a very controlled and perceptive writer. With her finger on the pulse of the, you know, contemporary contradictions between the political and the personal. I want to read a passage here to illustrate this. Sure, yes. Yeah. The former president continued to watch me. He smiled as if he was simply making conversation. But then his face stiffened. The congeniality and the charm withdrew. He leaned back into his chair. You sit there so smug as if you are beyond reproach. He turned to look at me, his face mere inches from mine. But you are no better than me. You think my morals are somehow different to those of you and your kind? And yet there is nothing that separates you from me. He sat up and made a curt gesture of dismissal. You may go, he said, as he adjusted his tie and leaned forward to examine the papers before him. Slowly I stood up and gathered my things. My legs seemed to drift beneath me and I almost stumbled as I pulled open the door. I was not able to look at the former president as I left the room. I did not say goodbye. As I made my way down the corridor, the junior associate came hurrying after me. He called out and I stopped, leaning against the wall. He stood before me, his face bewildered. Why didn't you say anything? Why did you let him speak to you that way? Because he didn't say anything that was untrue. That's so lovely. Intimacy is about isolation and loneliness as well. The interpreter experiences this in the extreme, especially when Adrian goes to Lisbon for a short trip that stretches on. Slowly, the communication dwindles into nothing, leaving the interpreter to imagine the worst. At the same time, while it makes, you know, political statements regarding the court and its seemingly misdirected investigation into African countries and leaders, whereas crimes against humanity actually occur all over the world. Hmm. On another level, intimacy is about relationships and the tangled webs they weave. The deeper you go into a relationship, the more complex form it begins to assume. I, want, I would like to do a short reading as well here to illustrate the nuanced nature of the writing while dealing with emotions such as friendship and envy. Here, Adrian has arrived at Yana's flat just before the interpreter, who is a bit delayed. Let's see what goes on through her mind. How have you two been getting along? I asked. They looked at each other and smiled. I was looking not at Adrian, but at Yana. She had put on lipstick and eye makeup, which she did not usually bother to do. And it might have been simply that I was not used to seeing her lips and eyes colored and delineated in this way, her features so emphatic. I realized belatedly that she had lightly applied the makeup for Adrian's sake. Certainly she had not done so for mine. I wondered then what it was like to be a man so often surrounded by such deliberate features, more vivid than actual nature. I looked at Yana and then again at Adrian. I saw that some intimacy had been established between them. It wasn't surprising. In fact, it was something that I should, I should have predicted from the outset. They were both personable and even seductive people. I thought this must be the reason for Yana's inexplicable transformation. In the end, it couldn't be put down to lipstick and mascara. That was only the physical manifestation of a more intangible shift. That is so well written. I think one of the flaws in the book is the scenes outside of the court describing the interpreter having dinner or attending events. These tend to sort of drag on a bit and distract from the core theme of the book at times. Yes, I don't really agree with this. Uh, I felt that it was flawless. I mean, the storytelling and the very powerful writing. Katie has a real sense of tone. The writing about the interpreter staying in Adrian's ap apartment while he isn't there portrays loneliness that is almost dreadful in nature. I agree with you. Uh, all in all, you know, one terrific read. But Radhi, I will allow you to rate this book first. My rating for the book is five stars. And I still think that the book has no flaws at all. Radhi, even the most perfect diamond is rarely flawless. But this time I must agree with you and rate the book five stars too.
That's unbelievable. Our first five star rating yes. Yes, isn't it totally wonderful? It is. Some more exciting news from Booknook. We are starting Booknook shorts that will be released every week. Every week. Yes. Two minute reviews of books from either Yats or I and sometimes both. So if you are loving Booknook, like and subscribe here and also visit our website www.booknook.one. I'm really looking forward to Booknook Shorts viewers. Next week, I review Never by Ken Follett. Do like and subscribe to Booknook as we ramp up our content to include something new every week. It feels good to say, see you next week. Bye-bye. Just seven days for the new Booknook Shorts to drop. Watch this space. Bye.